hello everyone and welcome back so in this series of videos we are building a blog application so in this part of the video we are going to look at how we can add a post from our front end user interface because not everyone is going to have access to the admin panel all right so in order to do that we are going to go straight over here and let me close things up over here so that we see things properly and i'm going to click on this block okay app and I'm going to create in a file over here and I'm going to call this forms.py. So whenever you want to put something in our database, you want to put it in a form or submit it through a form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say from and I'm running an import over here. So from Django, I want to import forms. All right. Then I also want to say from from the current models, I want to import um I want to import the post model. And I think these are the things we may need for now. So let's create a class over here. And I'm going to call this class post model form. And this post model form is going to inherit from forms dot model form as we see over here. And over here we are going to specify a class meta. So as far as this class meta goes. We need at least two parameters now the first parameter is going to be the model and this basically answers the question which model are we creating this form for and we are creating it from or we are creating it for the post model and that's exactly why we needed to bring this import the second question or the second attribute we need to specify over here is the fields and this also answers or try to ask the question which fields within the post model do you want to have access to now let me open this model over here and clearly we have title we have content we have author and we have date created so based on the logic of this application it is only the title and the content that you want the user to make a case for and not necessarily the author because the author is going to be the user and the date created like we specified here is going to be the auto now add which is equal to true so as far as this goes we are going to type in title over here and the next one is going to be content all right now when we do it this way we are good to go now we can use this form inside our views where we write every business logic over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the imports and bring the form over here so i'm going to see from the current forms i want to import and that's the post model form so now we have post model form going up over here all right so in order to work our way around it and that's exactly why um let's go back into our templates and inside our block we have our index.html over here remember i placed form over here now let me clear this and rather put in the form i mean the html form tag let me clear this action we are not going to use action here but then we are going to use method and for method we are going to say post all right so now let's hold on for now and i'll come back to explain exactly what's happening so let's go into our views.py and we are going to write in some logic over here or better still we can say form is now equal to and i'm going to say post model form and when i do this if i want to have access to this form variable okay i'm invoking from this um, class over here inside index.html then i also need to pass it over here but clearly this is becoming cumbersome okay we can pass in uh, multiple attributes over here but in order to work our way around it in a more systematic way and in a more clean manner what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a context dictionary over here. And this context dictionary, first of all, let's put out posts um, over here and posts. All right. So all that I need here then now is I just need the context. All right. So by having this context, I still have post dictionary over here. Now I can simply put in a comma over here and add in my form over here. So that it looks cleaner so once again 
I have this post sorted out over here. When I come back to refresh, we are still going to see this. Nothing has changed. And this form is also going to be accessible inside index.html. So now let's go to index.html. And now this form, as you see over here, is some kind of data. So we, in order to pass data, we have to use a double curly bracket. And I'll put in form over here. So this is form. Now when I come back here to come and refresh, you can see that we have this form showing up over here. So now we have our title and we have our content. Let me put up a button over here and I'm going to use the input type of submit. And I'm going to say boost. And since we are using bootstrap, let me put out some bootstrap classes over here. So I'll say btn, btn, and I'll say primary. So when I do this and come back here to come and refresh, you have this post button over here. Let me make it um, long or stretch. So I'll do btn block. All right. So this is just how we want it. Okay. So btn block. Later, we are going to start things over here. But now let's see how things are going to go. So now let's put out a title over here. And I'm going to say fourth post. And the, this is the fourth post scribe best post scribe best post. All right. Now, when I click on submit or post, we have a situation over here which is quite expected. And I wanted to show this in order to see how we fix it. It says that what CSRF verification field request aborted. And it says the reason given for failure is CRS RF token is missing or incorrect. Now, basically, what this simply does is whenever you are submitting a form to our database, or whenever you are submitting data to our database, we are trying to tell our system that yes, we want it to be sent in a secured manner. And this is one of the advantages um, Django gives us. And in order to make sure we send it in a secured manner, we need to pass in a CSRF token. CSRF stands for cross-site request forgery so that nobody can forge any data into our database or things of that sort. So in order to do that, we definitely have to pass in a, CS, a CSRF token. And this is not going to work yet but then i would want us to see the processes involved in trying to make this work so csrf token and i'll come back here come and refresh and let's type fourth post again so fourth post and i'll say this this is the post now when i click on this well, something might have happened, something didn't happen. When I refresh, I don't see fourth post over here because we are not done with our logic. But clearly, we didn't get any problem with regards to a CRS RF token. So now let's go back into our logic because we are not done yet as far as posting is concerned. Now, remember we have a method as post. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come just right above here. And I'm going to say if the request dot method is equal to post. That's what I just showed. If the request dot method is equal to post, then clearly we want to have this indented because we have this if statement over here. Else, let's quickly do this. Else, we want to have the form as the post model. Um, form over here now what we also need to do is we need to pass in the request dot post over here so that this will actually grab the request or whichever data we are trying to pass in now the next thing we also need to do is to specify that if form dot um, is valid is underscore valid and there's a valid method over here. I'm going to say form dot save or under normal circumstance. This is what we are supposed to do. Now, when I save this, this is not going to work quite yet. But then the error 
that is going to throw at us is going to help us understand the sequence of activities that is happening so i'll come in here and i'll come and type in um, let me do fourth post over here and i'll say this is the fourth post all right now when i post this clearly we have an error it says what not now constraints okay so block post model author id so clearly this is trying to explain some few things to us now when we came into the back end whenever we are adding a post like we have over here we specify the author okay now on our form we don't have that option over here because then it is going to be a bad design somebody can just log in and post something and specify that um, another person posted it so what we need to do now is to attach the person making that request okay or the logged in user to the person making that request and that's very simple to do so before we save this what i'm going to say is i'm going to have a variable called instance an instance is going to be equal to the form.save and inside here we are going to pass in commit is equal to false we don't want to save it yet so what i can do is i can say instance dot author and the author is exactly what we are grabbing over here so the instance dot this author should be equal to the request dot user and the request dot user is going to be the logged in user okay so whichever user who is making that request should be associated to the author as far as that particular um, post is concerned then now we can do instance dot save we call the save method over here now this is going to um, handle a bit of the issue over here so now we have fourth post this is a fourth post now let's save this and see we have this being saved in the database and when we come back here to come in um, see we have this saved over here now when I click on this you can see that it is being assigned to admin or admin is the author because admin is a current logged in user now when I come back here and come and refresh we cannot see this problem over here okay which is not exactly what you want okay when we refresh we are always going to have this and in order to find a way around it we need to come to the very top over here and import something that's going to help us have our way around it so from django.shortcuts uh, render was already imported for us we need to import uh, redirect so i'm going to do a comma and redirect over here and all that we needed to do or we need to do is to return a redirect okay and this is going to take in the url for which we want to return to and that's exactly why inside of our urls.py i always specify this name now this name you see over here is specifying the name of the url so i can just copy this Control c and i'll paste this over here Control v and i'll save so now with this done when i refresh yes we have that issue but then when i refresh again we are not going to have that issue now let me add the fifth post so this is going to be the fifth post and i'll say fifth post over here for the content now when i click on save we have fifth post over here when i come back to come and refresh we don't have that alert popping up over there now the next thing i would want us to tackle is to how to style this form over here and with this one we are going to use PSP forms so i'm just going to do a google search of PSP forms like this i'll leave the link in the description below and i'll click on the installation and first of all we need to run a pip install um, django dash crispy dash forms i already have it installed over here so i'm not going to go through that but if that's going to be your first time you just have to copy this and inside your terminal okay not where your server is running you just have to leave it inside your terminal you just have to come and paste um pip install django crispy forms and let me open this up a little bit now when i run this it's going to tell me that um 
my I mean requirements already satisfied as you can see over here. So I have Django Crispy form installed in my system. Now what we need to do is to come and grab this over here. So we need to copy this and as you can see we need to go into installed apps and inform our project that we are going to use crispy forms. So right over here we are going into settings.py because that's where we have installed apps remember and inside installed apps i'm just going to paste this over here i'll save this and we are almost done the next thing to do is to look out for the template pack and we just have to copy this so i'll do a control c and i'll come in here and i mean anywhere is good to go but i normally would prefer to have it here and i'll paste it over here and we are not using uni underscore form we are using bootstrap so i'll specify bootstrap for over here remember we grabbed the bootstrap for starter template so we are using bootstrap and finally let's click on next we need to copy this to control c and this is load crispy form tags and if i'm to come back here we are actually going to put this on top of the template for which we want to use the crispy form tags. So just about before we come inside the block content, I'm going to paste this over here. So I'm going to save this and there's a template tag and inside it we have load crispy underscore forms underscore tags. And the last thing we need to do is to pass in a filter over here on the form. So I'm going to pipe it like this and we are going to say crispy. So I'll save this and if we should come back here to come and refresh you can see that we have some styling um, showing up over here. Now we want to resize this content uh, portion a little bit and in order to do so we need to go into um, let me close some of the things we have opened over here. We need to go into the, um, the forms okay the forms.py and over here we are going to call the variable contents and content is going to be equal to forms as we have it over here dot char field and inside char field we are going to call widgets so we have widgets and widget is going to be equal to forms dot um, forms of text area and over here we specify an attribute so this attribute and is going to be in a dictionary so we are going to have for the row attribute we just want two okay so we just want two rows going up over here and if i am to do this and save and come back here and come and refresh we can see that nothing is changing up over here yet let me see okay so we needed to say rows and not just row so if i save it and come back here you can see that um, this has been resized and I think it's too small. So let's increase this to four. Let's save it once again. And yes, we are good to go. All right. So this is good as far as what we wanted to build this concern. So once again, let's add our Sith post. And for the fourth post, we have a couple over here repeating. All right. So let's do the the meeting. Okay. And I'll say um, there will be a meeting at the office. Okay. So when I post this, we have there will be a meeting at the office, and anybody who wishes to read this blog post can proceed to doing that. All right. So this brings us to the end of this session of the video. Now, if you find this content very useful, there are a couple of ways you can help me grow my channel. Kindly subscribe to Cambrotech and don't forget to hit on the notification button so that anytime I release a video, you'll be duly notified. Also, share this video with friends and family who find this content very useful. At Cambrotech, we say learn programming, you can do it. Don't forget to pass in any comments or ask any question if you do have one. Thank you very much and bye bye.